But basically, by taking one imaginary horizontal line, I'm able to get some really important measurements that will help as references as I start to sketch in the rest of this drawing. Now, the same can be done for vertical lines. Now, not so obvious, but right here I see a really sharp contrast in a value shape there on the nose. So, take a measurement, go down from that same point using a plumb line. I've got a measurement there for that value shape. And I can see right about there is the nostril. So put that point there and I can give myself a reference line for the nostril. And I come further down. There's the lips. And right there I have a reference for where the lips can go. Go further down, I could get his mustache, I could get his hand. So there, using this imaginary vertical or plumb line and this horizontal line, we've got some key measurement features for the face. I could go and do this from other points I've already measured or pick another point and keep putting in references like that. But there's a problem with using these imaginary horizontal and vertical lines. Is that if you're not exactly horizontal or vertical or plumb or horizon, you know, it's going to kind of wander and you'll get a little bit off. But there's one thing that these imaginary lines are really good for. Now here's the same image, but imagine this is your drawing and you're starting to work on it, but something doesn't look right. In this image, I've intentionally altered three key facial features and, and moved them. So let's see if I can find one here. Now. This ear kind of maybe looks like it's off. So there's a point right here where some value shapes meet. And I'm going to take a horizontal line across from there. And I see that, oh, it's roughly equal to the top of the ear. Now I come here, find that same point in my imaginary drawing, take my her imaginary horizon line. And I see that, well, wait a second, there's a problem. That ear's not in the right place. Now, that's one of the three features I edited here in this image. If you want to try to find the other two, you can go to this web address or look for the link over in the description here at YouTube. Now for my favorite method of measuring. It's something I like to call triangulation. Now, many of you watched the Mona Lisa with MS Paint video and I got a lot of emails asking me, what is that you're doing in the beginning of the video? If you don't know what I'm talking about, go look at the video right now. So I'm going to show you how this method of triangulation works. But before we start, some of us might need a refresher in some basic geometry. All right, so we have two points, point A, point B. Geometry says any two points creates a line. Well, a couple minutes ago, I showed you how to easily use your pencil to measure and create a line. So I'm going to make my new point B right here, take my pencil, Use my finger and the tip, measure that length, kind of get an idea of that angle, and there we go. New point A. So, let's add another point over here, call it point C. 
Geometry says any three points creates a triangle. Now we have a triangle here. Now, how do we put point C over here? How do we measure it? Well, this is where triangulation comes in. Geometry says if you know the distance from point A to point C, if you create a circle around point A with a radius of that distance, and you know this distance, you create a circle around B with a radius of that distance where the two intersect is point C. Well, that's boring. So I'm going to grab another pencil. We're going to do it the easy way. I'm going to measure point A and point C, point B and point C. Real easy. Take the two, put them over here, and where the two touch, voila, point C. We've recreated that triangle. That was really easy. Now, this works like that in the circumstance that we're doing it in a one-to-one -one scale. So, what happens if we want to do it differently? Well, geometry also says if you know the angle there and the angle there, that you can find point C. Now, we don't really want to get out our protractors and measure these angles and create these lines because really these triangles are imaginary. All we care about are the points. We're trying to measure points in our drawing. So an easier way to think about this is as a clock. Two, three, six, nine. And let's say that's the minute hand. Well right there that's roughly oh say 12, 13 minutes. So we can imagine 12, 13 minutes, or we can take our pencil, take an angle measurement, draw that angle out. Same here, we can imagine the clock. That's 12 o'clock. Oh, that's 56 minutes. Or I can take my pencil again and imagine that. And where the two intersect, we have point C. Now, measuring this way with triangulation, we can also scale larger and smaller. So point A, point B. I'm going to imagine new point A, new point B, my angle. Oops move point B over here so there we go obviously we've set a new scale this, this line is much bigger than that line now imagining these angles again either taking our pencil and moving it or just imagining our clock hand and do it again here. Voila, we found the new point C at this different scale, larger scale. 